Okay, this is the Unit 1 review, and all of the information I'm going to talk about and show here correspond to the handout that I either gave you in class on Thursday or that I'm sending to you in a mail with this attachment, this video attached online. And this is the review for much of the stuff that we have covered in the class to date, the first third, and the third of the class covering Illustrator and Vector Graphics. And in, uh, it indicates the kinds of things that I would like you to know. And on Thursday, we're going to have a quiz. And I will ask you to determine, to define many of the terms on this page. That might mean going back and looking at one of the readings or more, or going back and looking at Illustrator. And I might actually ask you to draw something in class. So for a start, the most important thing to understand from this section of the class is the difference between vector graphics and bitmap graphics, which um, I'm going to show some examples right now first. Just like class. Okay. We'll start with an image from South Park. Doesn't all fit. Let's get it in there. So South Park, a cartoon like South Park with its curvy lines, flat, cartoony looking appearance, and modularity. So you see there's a lot of shapes and forms that are repeated over and over again. Uh, a show like this is drawn with a, vec a vector graphic application. It might not be Illustrator, it might not even be Flash, but Flash is a good example of a vector graphic program that's used specifically to create animations. And some of you might be in a class either this year or next year where you'll be using vector graphics in order to draw animations in Flash. So it's a really good idea to work on that and to get better at uh, having control over the uh, the way that the lines are mathematically defined. And how do I know, uh, besides the fact that this is flat looking, is uh, looking at the curves, I can see that these are Bezier curves. Bezier curves are determined mathematically. They're averaging out the shape of the uh, torque of a curve. Here's a little illustration that shows the difference between vector graphics and bitmap graphics, which was one of the most important things to understand. Vector graphics on the right are defined by mathematical equations. They can be rescaled. We can make them as big as we want to, and they will re retain their crisp lines. And as I said before, they're flat and unrealistic and unphotographic looking. They're also, they also tend to be small files. On the left is an image uh, produced in Photoshop and they uh, actually show the little logo there. Uh, and it is a, a photo, a, a bitmap graphic is made out of pixels. Pixels are tiny square dots or picture elements that's spelled out pixel. That stands for picture elements. They are resolution, so bitmap images are resolution dependent. That means that the rescaling or the size is limited by the number of pixels that are in place at the, when the document is first created. And so when you start off with that opening panel in Photoshop, just like with Illustrator, you need to pay attention to not only the size and the shape of the background document, but also the number of pixels that it can maximally contain. It's also, uh, bitmap images are also photorealistic. And we'll look at a few more examples of just differences uh, that show the differences really graphically. Here's another one. And here's another one. And this one you can really see the gradation in color, how there's there's no 
gradient between one color and another in Illustrator. Instead, you actually, one still has to select a specific color that will produce the effect of that gradient. Here's another demonstration that shows, another illustration that shows what happens when you magnify a bitmap image. You actually inadvertently create a gradient or you, you inadvertently might see a bunch of little jaggedy squares unless you have a high enough resolution in your background uh, image. A couple more illustrations. Vector on the right, bitmap on the left. Another one. And finally, and the sharpness and the ability of uh, vector graphics to be made as big as one wants without the loss of any kind of resolution or a change of appearance is why these kinds of images are used so much for logos and for icons. So we'll look at a couple of illustrations here from animation now. Here is a, uh, I did talk about South Park, right? Go back to that. Once again, South Park made with some kind of vector graphic program. And now we'll look at a couple of illustrations from The Simpsons. Here's The Simpsons open, drawn in a vector graphic animation program. Flat. Not too many colors. Not too many gradients of color. Everything's reduced. And now we'll look at another Simpsons. This is pretty funny. It's a uh, Simpsons episode that was shot in real uh, photographic video, photography. If I can get a good size, it'd be nice. Well, we can just look at it this way. You know, and I'm going to blow this up for a minute and you'll be able to see how the resolution decays, the, how the, the low resolution of uh, this image, because of the way that it needed to be compressed when it was put online, decays the appearance of it. So it's it will not look so good. Let's just look at that for a minute. That's why a lot of... So you can see... Okay, so going on to Illustrator specific things. So that's about bitmap versus vector graphics and why they're different and why that matters. So going on to some specific things of Illustrator, um, everything that you create in Illustrator is made out of points, lines, and planes. Uh, they're really fundamental kind of idea but it's uh, because of that, that kind of fundamental idea that it's good to understand. Point, in this case, I just uh, used a paintbrush to make a point. A line, and a line is always made out of two points. And I'm using this line in order to illustrate how every illustrator shape or object, they're also called objects, has a anchor point, has, has two anchor points at least, and a path. And that path is what lights up when we roll our mouse over it. And there's our anchor points. Same thing with this object, one anchor point. There's no path in a point. A single point just has an anchor point. Okay, point, line, path. A path is the black line that appears when you draw an illustrator. Um, if I wasn't using any color or stroke at all, this elastic line will be the path, and you can see the mathematical coordinates appearing when I'm drawing it. 
you can take away that stroke and you can still see that path. Finally, uh, a plane is composed, is a, is a shape usually composed out of multiple points. So at least three points. So starting with a triangle, that would be the beginning of a plane. Let's use our polygon tool to show a plane. It's a plane, is a plane, it just doesn't have any color in it. So Every single shape or object in Illustrator is contained within these coordinate boxes that are all that all have the mathematic coordinates of every anchor point as that are uh, being registered by the software. Okay, here we go. So a few more terms: point line plane, path. We just talked about a path. That's the black line that appears when you draw an illustrator. I'm indicating a path right now. An open path. So this is a good example of an open path, either one of these. That's a line with two anchor points. This one has more than two anchor points. I'll select the direct selection tool to show. There's an anchor point here. There's an anchor point here. There's an anchor point here. So it can have an open path can have more than two anchor points, but a, a an open path is not closed. It's a point. And then a closed path. This is a closed path. This box, anything that has a uh, that is made out of a plane is a close is a closed path. Here, this uh, little uh, white. Power, uh, white rectangle that I'm using to slide down here is a closed path. Closed path has anchor points that connect. You can connect the anchor points using the pathfinder. Let's see what else we have here. A compound path. Multiple paths that have been joined together. I'll make two right now. These don't have any. I can put some color in them. I'll do that. There's the other one. Where's that other one? I could join these together using the Pathfinder. And now we have a compound path. Whoops, I didn't actually have that other one selected, so deselect that. Compound path. I'm uniting those paths now.